Okay, this is the fourth and final seg segment of our class for this Wednesday night on the Worthy Lamb. <clears throat> Before the beasts and the 24 elders sang the new song, verse 9, John wept because there was no one worthy to open the book. The morning that God gave me the vision, I woke weeping and sensed that John must sensed what John must have felt concerning the frustrations of his day. But I was really weeping for different reasons than John. I had heard voices that were literally the groanings of the earth. This weeping was for our everyday lives, for our frustrations over why we are here, our failure to understand our purpose in life. Suicides, drug abuse, and depression stand at testimony as testimonies <clears throat> to the reasons for this weeping. So many people have let sin and disobedience set their lives off from the truth. Who is truth? The worthy lamb is the way, the truth, and the life. The weeping is for those who fail to realize that apart from him, there is nothing but an eternal void and vacuum. The weeping is for those who do not allow Jesus to take his place in their lives. <clears throat> the lamb alone rules the universe because only he has the eternal plan. Only he can take the book and say, I know the meaning of life. I know why God made us. I know from the standpoint of God and from the standpoint of man. He alone is the key to eternity. He is the one who has the plan. This plan is the beginning of a new era, both in heaven and in earth. This plan is the universal beginning of the reign of Christ as the monarch of heaven and earth. He is not going to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. <clears throat> he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He will be King now to the extent that we allow Him to be Lord of our lives. This is true for us as individuals, but it has special meaning for the, the church today. God is looking for a church and a people who will be a witness to the world and will let Christ totally be Lord of every aspect of their lives. From this point on, the throne is not just referred to as the throne of God. It is called the throne of God and of His Lamb. God has placed His Son, the God-Man, in control, and we are made to be kings and priests with Him. <clears throat> to be a king for God demands meekness self-control, temperance, and patience. God's authority is never the power-hungry spirit found in the world. The world says, proclaim yourself, be, be self-assertive, learn about and exert your ego. But in the kingdom of God, if we truly want to learn about ourselves, we must learn about Jesus Christ, meekness in God's restraint on our authority and he will not trust us with anything until we have shown ourselves to be meek in spirit. <clears throat> Let's read that again, excuse me. Meekness is God's restraint on our authority, and he will not trust us with anything until we have shown ourselves to be meek in spirit. God knows that if he gave some folks authority, they'd go around zapping people <laughs> who didn't agree with them. He knows the way we, he will, we will treat other people by the way we treat our husbands or wives, children, family, friends, and neighbors. Who does Jesus say will inherit the earth? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Jesus exerts divine authority with love, gentleness, and tender compassion. He is our example of meekness. And I beheld, <clears throat> and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the numbers of them was ten thousands times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such are as, in, are in the sea, as are in the sea. And all that are in them 
heartily, hardly, say, heartily saying, Blessed blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the beast said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Revelation 5, 11 through 14. John saw the uninhibited praise and worship of every creature, beast, elder, and angel before the throne of God. And that is what we do in our spirits when we come to God's house. If we understand worship, we fall down before him and worship him because he alone is worthy. Both God and the Lamb sit on the throne and there is a great burst of triumphant exuberance. We see golden bowls of incense. We hear harps and we hear new songs being sung. We do not need to go to the world any longer to find the beat or the words to the, to the new, to new songs. The Spirit told John, there is going to be a new song. We will see these new songs in the church relating to the worthiness of the Lamb, the, universal, the universality of the throne room of God, the rule of Christ in the world, and those of us who now share in that reality before his throne. We are, when our spirits are open, God will give us praises to sing that have never known or been heard of before. <clears throat> that have never been known or heard before. Every creature is singing, ten thousands times ten thousands, perfection, and all creation is crying out from every tribe, every ethnic group, and every tongue, with every possible sound. And when we sing in the Spirit, we represent what John heard. Singing in the Spirit sounds like many tongues and many voices. God likes that. He likes the variety in our voices that cry out and sing to Him because that represents people from every social and political order in the whole world. The universality of worship and praise reminds us of what Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers <clears throat> and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ephesians 1, 20 through 23. This is not some future event that is going to take place. This is the relationship we live in right now. Christ now is the head of the church, and he now has the authority to rule and reign. To the extent that we have our being in Christ, we have the same authority he has. Now, we're going to stop right there. And we'll continue again next Wednesday night. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for your word this evening. I thank you, O oh Lord, that you're opening our minds in new ways to see you and to see your throne room and to see the presence of your Holy Spirit as it works around us and how it intermingles with the earth. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would open our hearts and open our ears and open our minds that we can know you in a new way and be strengthened by these moments together. Oh, Lord, and we praise you and we thank you and we worship your name in Jesus' name. And now, may the peace of the Lord be with you, and we will see you Sunday.